start recording. I meant to do that uh, earlier on as well, because what I want to do is obviously make these lectures available, especially if they're you know important ones. Uh, this one, whether you missed the first five minutes there, it's probably not going to be the worst thing in the world. Um, so you do have a live class. Okay, some people have live classes after this, so we'll be good about um, trying to certainly end on time and all that. I don't think that's going to be a problem. If anything, we're going to tend to end early. Uh, and there's a method to that madness. Um, so let's see. Oh, a couple of people with some live classes. I think last I checked, there was there's only half a dozen or so. Maybe it's turned out to be more because we let a few more people into the class at the last minute um, who actually had, who were going to be on campus. So that was odd considering it's mostly, it should be mostly juniors and seniors in this class, right? We are an intro to game programming. Uh, no, no, we're not an intro to game programming. We're in computer graphics. Done it already. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right. So let's go through here in content. Uh, hopefully everyone has access to the Discord server, uh, hopefully here, and hopefully everyone has access to uh, LMS as well. And the challenge over an LMS right now is they're in the process of putting, hopefully, putting both of these sections of the class into a single LMS section so I don't have to keep updating both of them at the same time. So you may get an email saying, ah, it's been, you've been moved, you've been bumped to another LMS section or however it happens that they're going to be combined. We'll get there. We'll uh, have that happen. Uh, on the LMS server, in both versions right now, you should be able to either look at a live version of uh, the Google Docs, which is the syllabus and schedule, or you can also download just a Microsoft Word version of that if you don't want to see the live version. The nice, ver the nice thing about going to the live version is if I do make any changes, um, they will be there for everyone right away. So if I make changes here during class even, you will see that. Okay, so everybody see that? All right, so yes, this is computer graphics, uh, also known as, or I like to refer to it as 3D computer graphics programming. This is a very programming intensive course for those of you who thought they were taking, who came here to kind of just learn general things about computer graphics or thought they would be doing uh, modeling in Maya or animation or something like that. Uh, I'm afraid you might be mistaken, but I think most people here are, um, uh, have the right background. So this is definitely a programming course. We're gonna be, uh, very practical in this course. Uh, the text in the course, uh, does everyone, has everyone gotten the text? So that's my next big question. Um, whether either in, uh, you know, EPUB version, electronic version, PDF, you got it, you scanned it, you took a picture of every page, w whatever method that you did, um, you will definitely need the text. Uh, with that in mind, I tried to, I spent most of the summer trying to find a text that was good, uh, that, that really kind of covered modern OpenGL, all the latest features uh, of OpenGL using C++ in a very practical way that was also not super expensive. Um, so I don't know, I'm not quite sure what how expensive it is through the, the bookstore, but even on Amazon and things, it's not your typical $200 textbook, thankfully. Uh, and it is very much like a, a combination textbook lab manual. I'm viewing it definitely like a lab manual. And it's structured in such a way that you know, it's really meant for a course like this. Um, so a lot of it will we'll build, we're basically gonna go through the entire textbook, all the exercises from front to back. So you will definitely get your money's worth out of that textbook. Uh, it'll be a reasonably good um, reference as well. We're going to really focus a lot on, on, like what I said, the modern OpenGL pipeline and modern OpenGL programming. Uh, reason for that being, kind of one of the weird things is OpenGL, even though it's sort of like everyone hears OpenGL, I'm sure you've all heard of OpenGL before, Open Graphics Language. Um, but uh, the weird thing these days, the whole world is about to move away from OpenGL. Kind of frightening. Uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, maybe not entirely move away from it, but there's a lot of new things happening in computer graphics these days. Uh, how many of you have heard of Vulcan or Metal? Show of hands or show of... <laughs> uh, I should just have... Um, so those of you who... I, I, it's going to be tough getting show of hands on, on this. We'll work out something for that. Um, so Vulcan and Metal are, uh, depending who you ask, you know, if you're on a, on a non 
Apple platform, you're you're probably uh, probably heard of Vulkan, which is a new standard, kind of the the, uh, the successor to OpenGL, which is uh, which is more powerful, even more programmable, but tends to be a little bit more intense and close, as I say, close to the metal, you know, close to the actual hardware. Kind of difficult to pick up as your first foray into graphics programming and and uh, kind of thing. So a lot of people still do recommend. Looking at OpenGL, which I do, you know, go with OpenGL, kind of master that. And the good thing is if we look at modern OpenGL, which is the programmable shader pipeline that we're going to be focusing on, it's going to be a really hopefully great transition for you when it does come time to move over to Metal or to Vulkan, things like that, which are, again, also very programmable GPU, shader, that whole sort of pipeline. So... Um, that's kind of where we're at, you know, try, trying to find a, a good textbook that's going to kind of lead us through, do a lot of stuff in terms of shader principles, programmable pipeline principles, and give you a, a lot, a lot of hands-on experience with that so that you get a, a, you know, feeling you'll be saying, okay, what is the depth look? Or, okay, what is bump mapping? Okay, what is, you know, how do I do fog? How do I do, you know, kind of practical approaches to a lot of these things? Uh, which is not to say we're not going to also talk about theory. We're going to do that. We're going to be kind of balancing back and forth. Um, the other textbook, the uh, I, I put some uh, optional or recommended. There's lots and lots of different resources out there. I like to offer or recommend for people to have some sort of you know bigger, thicker book that goes also into you know maybe a little bit more of the um, conceptual, theoretical bits and pieces of computer graphics as well. As well. And I'm going to be pulling in different parts of that and po posting whether they be kind of additional supplemental notes or occasionally a chapter here and there or uh like if you've been over on discord and you've seen there's a content uh or excuse me a what is it called uh topics area over on discord uh and in there i'm going to be posting kind of the additional things that you're hopefully going to be interested in i'm going to not overwhelm you um, but there will be stuff and Although it may not be directly related to the sort of lab work, it will be important. Um, how we're going to, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of lots of tests and, and lots of things, so we're going to try to balance the workload. Um, this is the first time we're offering this particular version of the class, and I've gotten a lot of input from different angles, so I'm trying to balance a bunch of different things. Uh, there used to be a computer graphics course taught through the ECSE department by Randall Franklin. Um, that was taught for many years, and he's not offering this year, obviously, or else maybe you would have been over there, but instead you're over here. All right. Apologize. I'm all wired up first day of class, all excited. So let me try to go back to our syllabus just a bit. Um, maybe that'll help coagulate some of these concepts that I'm throwing out there. Okay, so we're in computer graphics. This is an entirely remote course. We are going to be meeting. Uh, there will be live lecture, uh, uh, some live meetings uh, Tuesday and Friday from 12.20 to theoretically 2.10. Um, everything will be entirely remote. I'll be doing office hours and check-ins and that sort of thing all remotely. Hopefully uh, everyone should have some background in programming C++. You should have completed, uh, I believe, Fundamentals of Computing and Intro to Algorithms at this point in your career. Certainly if you're uh, juniors and seniors in the uh, computer science track, I believe that's the case for everybody. Um, let me know if, if there, if anyone's not as familiar with C++, I can give you some, uh, additional, um, resources on that to kind of come up to speed. Don't worry. We're not going to get into really, really heavy C++. Um, the amount of, in, you know, instantiation and inheritance, uh, templating, all that, not going to do lots of that kind of stuff, but you have to be at least fluent enough to know, okay, you know, how to, what main is what, you know, those, you know, how to, how to put include files and so on and so on. Basic structure, you need to definitely know that sort of thing. All right, so we are assumed to have a strong background in prior coursework in object-oriented programming in C++. You've taken data structures a while ago. Hopefully you remember some of that. Uh, stacks, queues, trees, and recursion. We may use some of that. Um, basic ma matrix algebra, or linear algebra and trigonometry, pre-calc and dis discrete math to some degree. You should have that background. That's kind of the foundation for computer graphics is definitely math uh, and uh, algebra and so on. This isn't a math course, though. We're going to have a few sections that are about math, transformations, how they, you know, the things that we uh, focus on with regards to computer graphics. 
but obviously I'm, I'm not within the math department, so we're gonna be focused on how we use those things as opposed to a lot of the theory behind those things. Uh, the one area that I like to point at and get a little bit into the theory on is the area of quaternions. You may have noticed that I already have a quaternions special channel in uh, the Discord there. Um, they're kind of my arch enemy. So I like to, you know, just when I find good information, I like to share that with people because quaternions are just such a weird thing. We'll get into that later. Don't worry. So that's some of the math that we'll get into. Not deep, deep into math, but enough. Uh, you may, you know, if you, if you are, if you feel like, you know, your math background isn't quite what it should be, um, there are some also some references to other textbooks and other things that are specifically on 3D graphics or math for 3D graphics. So that's, that's a possibility for you as well, which you can look into. So um, continue on, we'll just you know, go through the syllabus is sort of the, we'll see how far we get through the syllabus and then uh, talk a little bit uh, about some background and history of computer graphics today. And I'll point you to a couple of resources that would go through a couple of different slides and things, but let's get through the syllabus so we kind of know what's going on. All right, uh, computer requirements. Uh, double check on this. You should, I'm, I'm sure that the standard laptop uh, from RPI, certainly for people who are uh, into the more GSAS CS side of things, comply with this. But we are, we are going to be using OpenGL 4.1. The assumption is 4.1 and higher. And uh, you're going to have to install some different packages on there. So now it's time. Does anyone, and I'm, I'm, I'm bracing myself, you can't see me, does anyone have a Mac? Or, or do we have to wrangle Macintosh issues at all? Hopefully not. Um, the, the safest thing, the best thing to do, it used to be, this used to be very um, Mac friendly until Apple decided to no longer support OpenGL and that's kind of an issue and that's why they're kind of going their own place with, um, uh, with Metal now. So speak now or reach out to me if you are using a Mac. Otherwise, um, if you have a PC, All right, uh, go ahead and give me a remote or give me a reaction on the um, on, over on Discord. That's that's over there <laughs> uh, to let me know that that everyone's okay on that. Um, so hopefully that that's again you know personal nightmares is that you know half of you have Macs, but I mean I have Mac as well. But these days, wow, variety of a real variety of reactions. I hope those are all good ones. Um, <laughs> reaction with older adult. I'm not quite sure what that means. If that means you, you have a PC or Windows or whatever. Anyway, hopefully you do. Instructor, that's me, uh, Eric Amherst, PhD. I'm a senior lecturer within the Cognitive Science program, although all of my courses and everything I do is actually within the GSAS program. So my home department is over in Cognitive Science. Um, that's where my research had been. I also do work with the Idea Center. There's this thing called the Campfire over at the visualization system that I invented with a, a friend who works over at MPAC now, uh, doing kind of immersive visualization displays. Uh, eventually, I'd like to be looking for some people to do some research on that um, because of the whole pandemic thing that's kind of put on hold a little bit, but immersive systems and visualization is an area that's near and dear to me. Um, I used to be sort of affiliated with the Sizzle Center as well and over at MPAC, but those are, I can be a conduit for that sort of thing as well. Um, easiest way to get a hold of me is, of course, on Discord. Uh, you probably see, you may occasionally see me as Eraser Mice over there. Um, uh, I would start with a trivia question. If you figure out why my nickname is Eraser Mice, um, it's, it's a good one. Uh, email address, email is always good as well. All right, so ways to get a hold of me, do that email, Discord and so on. All right, general course description, what we're doing here, okay? This course covers modeling, viewing, and rendering techniques in 3D computer graphics. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, touch a little bit about all of these things. We're not gonna get, you know, really heavily into creating models in Blender, but we are gonna understand how models are represented. Potentially you can, you know, if you have ever used, anyone ever used Blender? Um, so I'll throw a couple of things. Type while I um, any uh, or Blender, or Maya, those sorts of things. If you have any experience in 3D packages that you've done modeling and things, that could come in handy because we're going to look at the way that data is represented in there. 
Okay. Um, the emphasis is on modern shader pipeline programming in OpenGL using C++. I think I've already mentioned that. Topics will include mathematical foundations, matrix transformations, relative, uh, rel yeah, relevant to 3D graphics, clipping, projection, hidden surface removal, managing 3D graphics implementations, shadow to shadow mapping, and generating soft shadows, etc., etc., etc. Okay. So want to be as practical again as practical as possible so that you know going on from here. Uh, one of the reasons for this course was to provide a better runway to our uh, computer game architecture class. A lot of people got into that class and didn't already have this kind of foundation of computer graphics. So it wound up being kind of uh, uh, difficult back and forth. And a lot of, we spent a lot of time debugging OpenGL programs in there. And really it, it, it uh, became, you know, it's, it's an issue where we're definitely trying to address with this course specifically and also filling back in that gap for a good computer graphics kind of nuts and bolts course as well. So that's the reason for this course to really kind of hopefully give you a solid foundation in modern graphics language programming. And then you can take that, you know, into a uh, advanced computer graphics class or into a computer game architecture class, or if you want to develop your own engine or you want to use what you've learned about shaders uh, in other game engines, hopefully it's a good uh, platform for that. Um, you could, write extensions to Blender. You could do things, you know, with uh, other applications as well. It's not necessarily all about games, um, but it is all about graphics. So the assumption here is that you want to use, apply these things in things like games and graphics. So, all right. So that's the general course. Again, here's the text, uh, Computer Graphics Programming in OpenGL Using C++ Plus by Gordon and Clevenger. I like the book. I think it's pretty good. Um, so I think it's really great. Uh, if you are planning on taking computer game architecture in the spring, you might want to think about picking up a copy of Game Engine Architecture uh, by Gregory, which is the, the text we used for that course as well. Um, it's not, considering how thick of a book it is, I don't have it on my shelf right next to me now, um, it's, it's a bargain considering how many pages are in it. And it's also a really good practical book talking about what's going on inside of game architectures and how OpenGL is used in there and even talking about more modern issues and so on. So it's... If anything, I would like to kind of refer to that book rather than sort of more other out there courses. So um, I guess one of the questions is, um, I'm gonna say, that, let's see, games or um, okay, I'm throwing two letters or two two statements out there, games or entertainment. By entertainment, I don't mean games, I mean everything else. If you are, you know, predominant thinking like, oh, I want to do things like I want to develop software for doing 3D modeling, or I want to, um, you know, develop graphics uh, uh, software in, you know, could be any sort of multimedia field. It could be visual effects for movies and film. It could be um, working on things like Adobe After Effects or, or Adobe Premiere or any sort of rich visual multimedia software as opposed to specifically being in games. So um, I'm assuming most people are probably coming from this from the game perspective, but some people may from the other perspective as well. So if you wanna go ahead and react, uh, let me know. You know, um, there are, I have some friends who, uh, who I've worked with and maybe I'm giving guest lecturer out there. Um, what about game engine? Uh, well, by game engine, I mean games. So if, you're, if you wanna use this in a game engine, uh, this would be, you know, if you're planning on using graphics in Game Engine, uh, that would be in games in Game Engine. I mean, those, are the, those are the same thing. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm slicing the, uh, slicing the onion straight down the middle so as to avoid crying. Slicing an onion. I don't know what that even means. Um, in terms of people who are looking for the sort of uh, multimedia versus interactive games, sort of graphics versus interactive graphics, and even those edges are being blurred these days. It used to be kind of cut and dried, but it's getting different these days. So this is a get to know you class. All right, so there's lots and lots of, of possible supplementary textbooks. Uh, these are a couple of the ones that, that uh, I think I've got more or less all these on my shelf and, and I can say, yeah, they're all pretty good. Um, you know, so if you have any of them, have access to any of them, you see them on sale somewhere, you wanna pick one up, they're all pretty good to have. Um, some of the top ones are the more expensive ones. Uh, the Shirley book on fundamental of computer graphics is actually pretty good and it's not super expensive. Um, so that one's good as well. The OpenGL super Bibles and programming books and so on. Those are the, you know, the kind of every, you know, if you're, if you're 
actually working in NVIDIA developing drivers. That's the, the set of books you may very well have on your shelf if you're you know, working on things like that. But anyway, those are the, the sorts of things. Uh, student learning outcomes. So what are you going to be able to do by the end of this class? What should you know by the end of this class that you didn't know at the beginning, hopefully, or maybe you already know? But after successfully completing this course, you should be able to demonstrate proficiency in programming with the OpenGL API using the C++ programming language. That should be no surprise. Uh, you should be able to create shader programs using OpenGL's shader language, shader computing language to shade fragments, vertices, and geometry. It's not just check. It's not not just shagments anymore. Wow, that's a good. Uh, not just fragments and vertices anymore. Uh, now we have uh, uh, geometry shaders, tessellation shaders, you know, all sorts of different things. We're going to be getting into those kind of advanced shaders as well. Uh, we're going to discuss the general application of computer graphics in the development of video games and on an accumulated knowledge of the theory of, well, of the history of the field. So we're going to talk a little bit about the breadth of the field. And you should be able to, to talk about how things that are really implemented impact the, uh, the field and vice versa. And you should be able to apply that knowledge, apply your knowledge of computer graphics in game development or other relevant fields. You know, again, could be anything. Maybe you wind up working on Blender or maybe you wind up working at Adobe or you wind up working at Autodesk. You know, CAD programs, absolutely, you know, wonderful sorts of stuff as well. All right, so those are gonna be outcomes. How do we get to the, those outcomes? All right, now, here's where it starts to get interesting. So, uh, after success, no, I already did that part. All right, course assessment measures, how we're gonna assess everyone's. Okay, students will develop or complete programs specified by the instructor, both from the text and of their own design. All right, so there's gonna be, if you have the textbook, and you've kind of leafed through it, you'll notice at the end of each chapter, there are usually some exercises and often there's projects or research, re recommended projects, recommended research. Okay, as we're working through things, since it is gonna be you know, very much sort of a lab approach to that book and everything builds on itself, you should be able to, by the end of each chapter, you will have you know, created some programs and um, I'm gonna leave it a little bit open-ended with regards to the non-research and non-project-based exercises at the end of the chapter. I'm not gonna, in all cases, usually there's, I wanna say there's between one and four or five uh, exercises at the end. I expect you to do at least one of those exercises, which are gonna be on top of, you're gonna be responsible for knowing everything that was discussed in that chapter, which is gonna get you, you know, some basic programs that we're gonna show in class and go over. But then you're gonna choose from those exercises some additional ones to do. So on top of the cut and paste sort of thing that you can do from the text in terms of you know the methodically going through the programs, then you will show that you understood by applying at least, doing at least one exercise from each chapter in the book as well. So you can think of that as being this somewhere on the order of a dozen homeworks throughout the semester. Um, but it is gonna be you know, up to you. You can figure out which ones are the easy ones, which are the harder ones, how deep do you wanna go into things, but they are the recommended exercises at the end of each chapter. I'll kind of point out as we go uh, which ones. Um, so don't worry, it's, if we're gonna do this in a way that, that makes sense. Um, now, so you are gonna be responsible for that material and some exercises at the end, but also, but wait, there's more, and don't worry, it's not gonna be bad. There will be four projects that are progressively based on the materials covered as described below. That's gonna be required, okay? So throughout, as we complete different sections of the text, then we're gonna say, okay, based on the first few chapters, we're gonna have one project that is gonna be, you know, you adapt, you kind of make it, you know, your own, you do something else. Uh, could be as something as simple, like in the early programs, you're gonna be doing, okay, let's get, using OpenGL and GFLW and so on, get a, window on the screen and show a triangle. Okay, really, really simple stuff in the first ones. So you wanna do something beyond that once we get through chapters one, two, and three-ish. Okay, draw some squares, draw multiple triangles, animate something, you know, that's the level of project uh, on there. So the first project's gonna be pretty straightforward. As things go on, the project's gonna get more complex. So you'll see in here, if you look down, um, of the four projects, you'll see 10% project one based on chapters one and two. Uh, and that one's gonna be pretty pretty uh, straightforward. 15% uh, project two, add materials from chapters four, five, and six, and so on. Okay, so they will be cumulative. 
So you're gonna have more and more techniques. You're gonna be creating sort of a scene that can, that, uh, can do uh, more and more things on top of that. If you have an idea, uh, especially for the final project, for project four, that you wanna say, well, okay, I'm interested in going in sort of a different direction and you don't want to do quite as literal from there. I expect there to be you know, much more room for that last one. So the last one is gonna specifically require a sort of proposal before you start to execute on that one to kind of see where you wanna go with that. Um, we can be very, very open on that one as well. It doesn't have to be just like, okay, here's all the shaders we did. Let me just incorporate them and make them, you know, so you wanna do something that's more like animation or multi-camera or immersive or something that uses a different platform where you wanna try something in Vulkan or you wanna try, you know, that final project is gonna be um, much more open-ended for you on there. All right, so let me go back. So additionally, students will participate in bi-weekly personal check-ins to demonstrate continuous development of programming skills and mastery of the material. So you've all been very quiet. Oh, why isn't chapter three on there? Oh, that's a good question. Um, oh, chapter three is mostly math. Okay, so there's not gonna be, I don't believe that's the, uh, the math chapter and there's not specifically exercises on that, if I recall. I think that was my justification there. I have to go back and look at that. Um, I'll check. Don't worry. <laughs> so I don't plan on doing a lot of, we're, we're not going to be using Submitty necessarily. We're not going to be doing, you know, we kind of leave things, uh, again, very open-ended. I want to make sure, because this is the challenge of the remote semester. Okay. Um, it would be easy for people to say, okay, just go out, do the work. You would then submit it to, through Submitty, and I would have no idea whether you actually did that work or cut and paste or got it and all shared the homework and, and so on and, and kind of rounded that, you know, did that sort of thing. So want this to be a little bit more back and forth, a little bit more scholarly approach to things. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take each week, we're going to have the two, the beginning hour of class is going to be dedicated to lecture. Okay. So we have the beginning hour, which is lecture. The second hour is going to be dedicated to these check-ins. So everyone in the class, of which there's approximately 21 plus right now, uh, will have a bi-weekly um, slot, time slot in there uh, of approximately 10 minutes or so. We're going to work out, we're going to you know, figure out when people are available, what makes sense and so on. So we'll actually meet and go over the homework, kind of. So I, I don't want to do it through like just plain old submissions and it might be, you know, you share your screen, show me the program run, let's look at your code, let's see what, you know, where you were, where the issues are. And it might be, you know, if it didn't run, if it didn't, you know, work, you know, help you through. So there will be, it, there will be a graded component of that. You'll see 25% of the grade we based on those check-ins and how you're doing, okay? Um, so that's the idea. During those check-ins, you're going to be asked to demonstrate and discuss at least one of those exercises offered at the end of each chapter. So basically to prove that you are keeping up with things, that you are doing the exercises in the book so that I can kind of see where you're at and things. So you want to, you know, again, do something that is more than just a remote online class thing. So uh, I'm going to be reaching out to everyone. We'll be coordinating this via Discord, I guess, uh, to figure out what time slots are available. You know, it's gonna be, like I said, roughly 10 minutes. So um, I think that's, I've worked that out. So it'd be, if we have approximately 50 minutes uh, from each class, that gives us 100 minutes each week, 200 minutes uh, every, um, for, for two weeks worth. Uh, so then we just divide that roughly 10 minutes or so. So that will be the, the class section on there. Okay, so you can use the rest of that class, that second half of class time, that's gonna be working on your labs, working on your projects with the supplemental materials. Don't worry, there's gonna be lots of materials there, um, but I have to, you know, in order for me to check in with everybody and have time, we need to have, you know, a known slot for that. So typically the second half of the class will be uh, not live materials, okay? So it'll be either, either like a recommended video to watch or, a, or a, a, a video that I will have recorded ahead of time and so on, they'll be non-live, except if it's your 10 minutes, in which case it'll be 
frighteningly live or, or, or refreshingly live. Hopefully they are. Does that make sense? Um, any questions on that? Let's throw, throw those questions out there. So this is a new, you know, I've, I've uh, thrown this back and forth to a couple of different people and people, you know, meeting with you every week, every class. It's going to be, you know, really hard to do personally that way. But I think uh, checking in every two weeks should be reasonable enough. Um, any questions? Do you get it? <laughs> um, all right. Is everyone still there? Let's see. All right. Yeah, everyone should still be here, hopefully. All right. Um, okay. So we'll play it by ear. Like I said, it's a remote, middle of a pandemic, a new course, my first time. Um, we're going to make this useful. We're going to, you know, make this in combination, right combination of practical and theoretical and fun and interesting and so on. So we'll be, it'll be great. <laughs> okay. Now, sometimes if you are, if you're going to miss something or if we all determine that, you know, through our discussions, we'll have some group discussions on discord and so on as well. Um, if for some reason we say, ah, okay, we do want to like this week, we're just going to hand things in. Um, we may do just strictly through LMS, sort of a traditional way of doing things. Uh, and in that case, here's the guidelines, you know, we'll need a C++, your source code, uh, any shader files, a, an executable, since we're all on PCs, that shouldn't be, we're on Windows, it shouldn't be difficult. Any accessory supporting files, models, textures, cube maps, et cetera, et cetera, and a readme that's going to just describe your program and, and so on and so on. So those things, um, if, if you're going to miss a check-in or if you're out for a longer time, or if you do need to like submit something, or if we have a, a you know, project, we'll do it that way. Okay. We have that possibility. You don't have to include your GLM, G glue, GLFLW, soil libraries, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a second as well. All right. Yeah. A lot of this read me and all this kind of, you know, screen grab and all trying to avoid that by, you know, doing the live stuff on Discord so we can see it really running on your computers. Um, this week, not going to have any personal check-ins with individuals one by one because I think there's probably going to be a lot of uh, just sort of installation stuff. All right. So installation is going to be this week. The first homework is getting stuff up and running on your computer. Uh, you'll see a bunch of acronyms here, GLM, GL GLUE, GLFW, SOIL, and so on, what they are. There's a, a, a graphics, a GL math library, a, um, a GL extensions wrangler, a GL uh, window, GLFW is going to do windowing and input. Soil is a simple OpenGL image library. And then of course there's OpenGL as well. So these are some of the things that we're going to be using to actually implement our programs. OpenGL isn't really kind of isn't entirely complete on its own. And there's some other things we want to use as that are standards that are going to help us, you know, deal with the operating system, abstract things out, uh, have common ways of, uh, you know, doing our math and so on and so on, you know, deal with all the extensions. All right. So that's that. Um, some boilerplate stuff. We have to go through all this stuff. Grading, you know, you've seen these before. Concerns, if you have any concerns, talk to me right away. You know, if you're not sure where you're going in the class, how you're doing, let me know right away. Appealing grades, there's going to be a way to do that. I've, I haven't run into situations that yet. Attendance. Well, attendance. Um, I certainly hope that everyone is uh, attending. Now, uh, it's best to do it live in case there are questions. And I'm going to hope that, you know, we'll have more open mic sort of classes. Um, but being remote, it makes it difficult in some degree unnecessary to have the traditional attendance policy. Okay, because I'm going to assume if you miss the time that it's going to be recorded and you're going to watch uh, later on, okay, you need to keep up with the materials. That's again, why I'm kind of doing the check-ins so that I can say, okay, did you get to that point? Did you demonstrate? Did you, you know, can I ask you questions about, Hey, during that lecture about the history of computer graphics, we talked about, um, the initial computer arcade games that were using the classic vector graphics kind of thing. Can you give me a couple examples of those, you know, asteroids, battle zone, you know, those sort of things. Um, Tempest, you know, th th that sort of thing. So, uh, I, I'm gonna make sure that you do 
actually watch these things uh, and, and participate. So we'll be checking in like that. Um, so I do wanna make sure, you know, if, if you are attending check-ins, then I'll know you're around. Uh, if I, if you are AWOL, I can't get a hold of you and I don't see you active on Discord, you know, we go through the normal mechanisms to say, you know, there's an early warning system, there's you can reach out via email just to make sure your lives are going okay. Remote class is crazy. This we're, we're in the, still in the middle of a pandemic. It's not over yet. Uh, it's stressful. It's different. Um, uh, certainly remote learning is a, a, a new challenge to a lot of us. We're learning as we go still, um, but we're trying to make the best of it. So uh, we want to have as much back and forth as we can. We don't want anyone kind of just getting lost in it. That's gonna be one of the key things to this course and probably every other course. The big challenge for you is to stay on track, right? To, to make sure you're keeping up with the materials, okay? Um, that's why, you know, again, one of the reasons I chose the textbook I did is because we can sort of, you know, it's very progressive. Everything builds and you can kind of hopefully move through things in, a, in an orderly manner in addition to you know, what we have through the class. All right, you can miss one check-in for no reason if you're just like, you weren't there, whatever. Uh, I will note it, I'll be concerned, um, I'll be worried and so on, but I won't. that won't reflect against you when it comes to grading. If you miss one, more than one check-in without any reasoning, without, you know, if you said, oh, okay, I've got to go to the doctor, I've got an appointment, I've got to, you know, let me know and you've got a good reason. Um, we can make accommodations for that. But do let me know if you do, if you, you know, you're not making your check-ins and you're not on Discord and I don't see you actually attending the live lectures, that will have an impact according to the attendance policy. Um, so make sure you're remaining engaged, you're staying engaged. All right. The normal course policy is academic integrity, appropriate programming practices, appropriate language. I'm sure you're familiar with most of those. Okay, so we try to do those in as much of a flexible way as we can now given the new situations. Course topics and calendar. All right, yes, okay, yeah, week three or chapter three, mathematical foundations and matrix transformations. That's the one that is really not a specific, uh, specific exercises for, but it's the sort of thing that everything is then gonna build on past that. You know, you, you need to know the math, but there's not specific exercises uh, for there that are gonna be part of a, a, a project sort of thing necessarily. We just assume that that's used everywhere. All right, so we're gonna start off, that's today. Course overview, introduction to OpenGL, GLM, and libraries. Mentioned a little bit about that. We're gonna look at that slightly more and then we're gonna end a little bit early today. All right, and then we're gonna be getting into the OpenGL pipeline, the shading languages, some error handling, some crude, simple, you know, how do you incorporate animation into things? Um, project one is gonna be due. And project one, like I said, is mostly just gonna be making sure that you've got things up and running, you've got, you know, your programs happening, you've demonstrated a little bit of facility that beyond triangles, um, you can adopt, adapt that to other things. Okay, so give me a feeling as to what's going on. Then we'll be getting into all the things through this list. Now. This is week by week. Um, normally I will have, you know, one, probably one solid hour uh, discussion of each of these topics. And that'll be on the Tuesday lecture, normally. Everything's subject to change, everything subject to availability and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the second piece I'm gonna talk about or give additional materials about kind of broader topics that we'll discuss that can be, you know, how are the things that we're using, how are the things that we're talking about, how were they, A, they could have been, how they were invented, when they came along, what is the history of them, or potentially, you know, could you use them in something else, or kind of above and beyond, all right? So today, for example, um, I have a bunch of materials over in the topics uh, on the history of computer graphics in games and in entertainment, okay? Uh, other topics will include classic graphical algorithms, things like, you know, Bresnahan's line drawing algorithm and flood fill and those sorts of things. We'll discuss that a little bit. Color science, you know, you, I'm sure you've all dealt with RGB and probably alpha, RGBA color space in most of your programs that you've dealt with colors. But there's a lot of different color spaces out there uh, depending on the application. If you're doing live video versus, you know, stuff for print and publishing versus computer graphics, and there's color science, it's a whole field in and of itself. 
we'll talk about that. Quaternions, another math, advanced math used in computer graphics. We'll probably have a lecture on that. Cameras and viewpoints, emerging technologies, Vulcan and metal. Lines, splines, and curves, and different kind of algorithms and approaches to that. Uh, shader graphs and game engines and other applications as well. We can look at that as well. And there's going to be other ones that were added through. So, again, two sides of the coin, kind of the how-to and then the what to do, you know, with that. are going to be our pieces here. All right. So, any questions on any of that? That's our, that's our syllabus. So that's all there. Is everyone still awake? Still with me? All right. Okay. Now, uh, let me go to the right window here. All right. So, a little bit of a quick talk about programming, because after all, that's what we're here for. Um, we're going to be using Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio. Uh, this is a Visual Studio Community 2019 version, I believe. Uh, up and running here. Um, make the text bigger for the live stream. Ah, hmm. Uh, where are we? Files. Where is it? Editor settings. Where is it? Uh, editor settings? I forget now. Uh, tools. Editor settings. Control. Ah, I could try that. I no, not within, yeah, within Visual Studio, it doesn't do that. View lower left, yeah, that sounds, no, wait, lower, oh, there we go, Pfft. obvious, all right, <laughs> of course, of course, there's that, my apologies, 200%, uh, all right, now, this is I'm going to show you sort of, we'll, we'll look at a piece of OpenGL. This is an OpenGL program that is a program that is not in the book. Okay. Um, and I'll refer to this and make this available. This is sort of a very, very simple. This is the check to make sure you've installed OpenGL correctly. And, and not just, well, not, not OpenGL necessarily, but all of your development tools. Now, the first uh, chapter of the book, and I put up uh, in our resources, um, oops, there's new unreads here. Let's see, where am I? Okay. Um, under, in the setup issues, you'll see there is a setup issues. There is, uh, is it under topics? Uh, oh no, resources. There we go. I have too many different Discord channels. Under resources over on Discord, uh, I have put the, what is the final chapter of the textbook as a PDF file, okay? So don't, don't go sharing this everywhere. This is just in case, just in case you haven't gotten the textbook already and you're saying, okay, how do I make sure that I've got everything installed on my computer? So this week is really, you know, between today and hopefully by Thursday, no, Friday, you will have installed Visual Studio. Uh, you will install the libraries that you need. Um, and you will have things sort of up and running on there. So I'm going to refer to you over there just in case, you know, if you've got the textbook, by all means, look at chapter one and the appendix at the end to figure out how, how things are there. Um, and if you don't have the textbook, you can refer to the... Um, that one chapter that I've made available as a PDF file. And what this program is here, and I'll make this one available. This is the, one of the few that I'm going to just do, um, I'll just type in for you, uh, that this is correct, is testing for a correct install of Visual Studio and GLFW. Now the GLFW, you'll notice we had, like I said before, there's a couple of different components that you're going to be installing. Um, GLM, which is largely a math, a set of math tools, which is mostly through just an, an, uh, a set of includes, include files. There's GLFW, which is going to handle our windowing and it's going to make input available as well. Not going to be doing an awful lot with input, but we'll be doing some. Um, then there is soil, like I mentioned, these, which is the 
simple OpenGL image library. We're gonna use that for doing things like loading our textures, loading images, that sort of thing. Um, and what am I forgetting? Uh, glue, the extensions wrangler. Okay, so that's gonna be an important one as well. Now, the most basic one, the first one you're gonna to wanna to install, uh, and you can actually run OpenGL with just this one, you can you can do some of the examples with just the uh, GLFW. And GLFW, if you go and you follow the directions in, in the book, in the text to get open, uh, get GLFW, you'll notice you can build it yourself. You can build it from source. I recommend that. You should be capable of doing that. Uh, that's gonna require some other tools. You may need pre-make five for that, um, but everyone, hopefully is pretty comfortable with the, the usual song and dance at the beginning of the semester of downloading, installing, finding the right packages and so on. Uh, if you have issues with that, you can just download binaries for GLFW as well. So you have a choice of either building it yourself or uh, downloading from the GLFW site. Uh, it's referenced in, in the uh, setup guide that's available. And once you have that installed, you can actually go ahead and build, you should be able to go ahead and build your first OpenGL program. And this is sort of the simplest, one of the simplest ones. Um, and this is basically, we've got a main program. We initialize the GLFW library. We create a window that we're gonna draw in, which is, I will make it a 640, 480 window. Anyone know the significance of 640, 480? It's, uh, used to be important these days um, resolutions are a lot better than 640 but we'll be opening a window that's 640 called hello not a lot going on very basic window setting a context for that and then we're going to draw a triangle right uh, some additional stuff we have in here just to show that was possible that GLFW, like I said, it's the, it's the thing that's handling windows for us here and giving us a context to draw on for OpenGL. But it also provides some windowing input and so on, some other things. So here I went ahead and I have, okay, I got the X and Y position of the mouse or the cursor, right? So it gets the cursor's position and then it does some very, very basic OpenGL. It's about as basic as you can get. This is OpenGL that we never want to see again. All right, this is just a test. This is not modern OpenGL, okay? Um, it's this, these few lines here, and it's legitimate and it's supported by version three and earlier OpenGL. Um, you'll notice I didn't specify needing a particular level of control and level of version control, a version of OpenGL and so on in here, just very, very basic. And this is draw, begin drawing a triangle. Here's the three vertices of that triangle. Here's the end, okay? And then we swap our buffers on the screen and we pull for events, which are, you know, basically GFL, GLFW asking us, should we close the window? Now let me go ahead and I'm gonna run that. Now, all of our programs, you should be building for x64, 64-bit platforms. Welcome to 2020, right? So we shall all be dealing with 64-bit platforms. Uh, we can build for debug or release. It's nice being able to debug because we can set breakpoints. So I'll go ahead and set a breakpoint right there, for example. And now I will say local Windows debugger. It will, should hit that point after it links everything. You'll see, ah, it's hit that point. Now, uh, a window has opened up on my other screen. This is just a background window. And over here, I'll come back again, and I will say, I will tell it to continue, or I will step over, all right? So I will create a window. All right, now on my other screen again, hopefully I can, oh, it's not gonna let me drag that one yet, all right. Interesting. All right, I may have to let it go a little bit further here. Ah, the bad news is if I don't let this run, I don't think it's gonna let me move. 
So I'm going to say continue. There we go. Now it's moving. So you see, I have a triangle on the screen. A bright green, should be bright green triangle on the screen. So this is the hello world green triangle. Very, very simple. Yes, things are working correctly. I've got GLFW in the right place, my linker setup, and so on. So that's the most basic GL, uh, OpenGL sort of program. Now, let me just say a little bit about this and why this should be the last time, hopefully, we see, you know, or this should only be used for testing. What is modern OpenGL? You've probably heard me say that a couple of times now, and I you know, keep stressing modern OpenGL, modern OpenGL. And that's all about this, the programmable pipeline, the modern features of GPUs and so on, and you know, how things are done. Initially, when OpenGL was first created, it was not nearly as programmable and flexible as it is now. It's largely more just, you know, kind of simple set of geometry, draw things on the screen. Um, the idea of shaders was not quite, uh, certainly not what it is today and so on. So it had this uh, sort of two modes that you could be in which are known as retained mode and immediate mode, okay? Now, immediate mode means drawing something on the screen or you know, sort of it is done as you, uh, as you specify it, right? So he, you can see here there's a begin and an end and everything within here gets drawn, you know, between a begin and an end, right? So this is basically saying, okay, do this, do this, you know, here's a vertex, here's a vertex, here's a vertex, done. All right, so it's giving it procedurally how to draw it, specifying exactly what to do. You know, here's the order of the vertices, here's the geometry, it's gonna be triangles and so on, immediately like this. And things are gonna get executed as they are encountered. Okay, as opposed to really being able to set things up and then hand things off to the shaders to the GPUs and so on, right? So in the, the modern version, it's gonna require a little bit more setup, okay? Over the modern version, you have to sort of dive into shaders right away. And this is a modern program, and I'm not gonna show you the whole thing because it's you know, one of the first things you can do is you're gonna to want to, excuse me, to put this in, this isn't, this isn't actually the triangle over here, but to give you an idea that the modern version, you're gonna dive immediately in uh, with shaders right away because shaders are really what uh, differentiates modern, G modern OpenGL from a lot of the legacy stuff, All right? So over here, you'll see, other than this commented out part, that there is no vertex specification, you know, one vertex as a, at a time, instead, we're doing things through drawing arrays and we're doing things, things through buffers. We're setting up data structures, uh, uh, context and so on, shader programs. And then we're using that to let the GPU and the system do a lot more of the heavy lifting and so on, as opposed to really just kind of specifying a piece at a time, okay? So if you see GL begin, GL end. If you can find any additional materials and tutorials that seem like they're really cool and easy to do, watch out for things that have GL begin, GL end, because they are quote unquote, not really modern open GL. So they're useful for learning core concepts, but uh, these days we wanna be over here where we are you know, working with um, uh, arrays and buffers and um, yeah, that's what we want to be doing. <laughs> All right, see up in here. Let's see, I think in my, uh, where's my actual? Thought I set up some arrays in here. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, anyway, giving away too much for the, of the first, the first uh, programs. All right. Now, other helpful hints. Um, there is one library that you're probably going to refer to a lot. This, uh, after you get past this simple version, you know, this one over here, the second version, as you get into the modern stuff, we start using the, the uh, GLEW, right, glue. All right. 
Now, glue is where we really get into the extensions of OpenGL and the more modern versions, okay? So as you get over here, in order to run this, you will also have had to make sure that you have installed GLEW, glue, correctly, all right? You'll probably wind up with a, um, a pre-compiled or a compiled version of glue. Um, so that's the other piece you'll need. So as you get into the modern stuff, this, that's the one nice thing about the older things, you can just get by with just GLF, GLFW with the uh, old style. And the newer modern stuff, you're gonna wanna use glue with as well. You'll notice in here, I've got it saying, okay, we're using a statically linked version, which is, it's not actually statically linked. It's kind of odd. We'll get into that as we, uh, you know, things. But one helpful tip about the installation. Um, if you've gotten, like even if you put, I think Maya was the, the program I saw on my machine that actually has its own version of glue in a directory. Um, hopefully, uh, does everyone know what a DLL is? Wow. Um, I'll, I'll ask about that. You've probably encountered them. Um, something I just assume. Um, have you ever built a DLL or encountered? Oh, I'm in the wrong, I'm sorry. Right, okay. Um, it's going to depend. All right, so we're back. The certain dynamic link libraries, dynamic link libraries are supposed to be uh, shareable. Now. The one thing that I will put, uh, because everybody needs glue, if you are using a dynamic version of glue and it's in some accessible place and we're all using hopefully the same one, um, otherwise we wind up with uh, potentially a lot of libraries to copy around. Glue t tends to be the one that likes to be a dynamic link library. Um, most of the other ones will be linked statically, okay? Because they're smaller and they're more robust. The Statically linking glue, I've seen run into issues. Maybe we'll be able to resolve those, but um, if you have, if you if you can successfully statically link glue, you're in good shape. Um, if you don't, if you don't, if you can't, then we'll work around that. Um, it's uh, it's kind of it's it's interesting. Glue is kind of its own beast uh, in. Game architecture, we wind up using a dynamic version. I think it was a dynamic version of glue. Um, it's, it's a little bit odd. So if you want to, and you don't want to have a million versions of them around, you can put them in your system, your Windows system folder. That's where I put my glue library. So if you are doing anything with static link libraries and you wind up with, you know, of course, in this process of doing this course, you're going to wind up with dozens of uh, sample programs, and maybe you don't want to have dozens of copies of your link library or your DLLs, you can use them in your Windows system folder. You can put them there as long as you're not overwriting something that somebody else needs. Otherwise, you very often need them to be in a specific place on your on your uh, computer to deal with. So that's one thing to be cognizant of. It's kind of the one thing I've seen issues. Uh, there's a great there's a great demonstration. Uh, I'm going to give you a link there is a great series on, oh, let's see, on YouTube. I'll post a link in the, uh, in the resources. The YouTuber, his name is Cherno, the Cherno. And he is, he was a engine programmer at Electronic Arts uh, at one point a few years ago, and he's been kind of on his own ever since. And he's got a, a number of, got the three or four years worth of tutorials on OpenGL and game engines and 2D game engines, 3D game engines. It's, uh, his new engine is called Hazel, um, and it's really interesting. He also has a great OpenGL series, uh, and one of his first ones, I was looking, uh, he kind of goes through and uh, uh, painfully shows you the issues with uh, getting all of the right libraries uh, specified in your additional include libraries, uh, libraries to include. So that's kind of a fun video to watch. Um, and he'll kind of lead you through things. He uses GLFW as well. So um, I'll probably wind up posting a bunch of his videos there. All right, so um, 
let's see. That, I think, is most of the housekeeping. I think what's going to really happen, you know, the reason I show you, show you the kind of older style of uh, OpenGL is that it is valid to kind of, if you are just wanting to see, are things working? Is it up and running? It's kind of, it's certainly simpler than setting up your, um, your array objects and your shaders and, you know, it's, that's more involved. So if you need a sanity check, I just put this in here as a sanity check. Um, that's another, you know, another thing I, I, I uh, credit Cherno for, for putting up, you know, he, he recommended that as well, which I, I think is a, was a good idea. Um, it is a good sanity check because there's just a couple of lines of code you can uh, test to make sure that yes, you know, things are basically up and running and things are where they should be. Um, the one thing, if you are doing this compared to the newer code, uh, make sure that you don't require, let's see, here um, in this more modern version, I said, okay, this program needs at least OpenGL 3.0, right, here. And this stuff will work in 3.0, this begin uh, vertices. And if you specify four or newer, it won't work. So if you use the examples in the book and you're running up against a brick wall and you want to try this begin, you know, this simple triangle thing, note that you also may need to change your hints in GLFW to say, okay, I'm, I'm using an older, potentially, you know, fall back to an older thing here. So that's why one thing to watch out for as well. So, all right. Let's swap, stop from there. I guess I'm talking myself blue a little bit. Any other questions on it? Or you're just anxious, hopefully, to crack open the textbook or crack, crack open that extra chapter um, that I posted and get things installed. All right, that's the first thing. That's the first homework number zero, All right? Do that. Um, debating whether or not to show slides. Maybe we, that's enough for first day. We're supposed to do like, you know, first day is syllabus day and kind of go through things. Um, I'm gonna let you go ahead at your own pace to take a look at the topics uh, and the history of game graphics on there at your own pace. Make that the second. If you wanna use the second piece of class for that, by all means, if you don't have the textbook yet or if you wanna do that, so get that, get that, those pieces out of the way and we'll end things a little bit on the, yeah, a little bit on the early side. Um, I'll leave it open so that if you wanna go ahead and try install, you have any specific install questions, I'm gonna stick around obviously on the channel and this will be, I'll be here for tech support uh, for those of you who have any specific issues, if you're having any specific problems about getting things up and running on your computer. But so now would be a good time to, kind of go down that, that path, okay? Um, again, let's see, go ahead and check. In resources, um, there is, oops. Setting up for OpenGL. And then this, it's worth checking out. Um, this is the text and there is, where did it specifically, uh, there is, where did that go? Oh, I thought I had posted a link to it. There's a bit of an update on the installation. There we go, this one. Okay, so just in case if you're following along in the book, the latest 
on making soil. <laughs> uh, I went ahead, I used uh, pre-make five for soil. If you're trying to build soil do the, doing this uh, and you wanna build specifically for Visual Studio 2019, uh, I believe you have to use pre-make five. Soil is updated to do that. Uh, the, the, the distribution is made to do that. So you can go ahead and use pre-make five on this. All right, so that's one thing. Um, GLFW, still there. And otherwise, everything should be good. So it's soil. And again, with GLFW, you can just get the pre-compiled versions as well if you run into any issues, All right? So be aware of those. And yeah, that should get us going. Welcome back to RPI. I wish it wasn't remote. Uh, and I will stop the streaming portion of now and I will stay on for other questions. How's that sound? Fair? Uh, okay. Uh, contacting me, you can always contact, direct contact me through as DM, a direct message on Discord, or if you got something that you wanna email me, um, you know, a specific issue you wanna talk about, either one, it totally works. Um, yeah, environment variables, uh, absolutely legitimate as well. <laughs> Everyone has their own sort of way to do that. Does Windows have the clip of the, there? Um, for DLLs, uh, without getting into the registry and getting into a lot of other configurations, I uh, sort of staying away from messing around with the environment um, too much. Just uh, hopefully you shouldn't have to. That always tends to be, the more complicated you make it, you start off hopefully making it simple and then it winds up being even crazier. Um, so we'll see. Yes, glue 32 is fine. All right, we've already set up everything as the text says, yes. If it, if you're, if you set up according to the textbook and it's working, then you're good. Use that. Yep. I'm, I'm very pragmatic about that. If something works, move on to the next thing. And if it continues to work, we'll keep moving on from there. Um, so if it's not broke, we won't necessarily spend too much time worrying about that piece of it. We'll write really good code, but everybody's, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to see um, Again, this, this class is different. It's not like, you know, in, in, in uh, game programming where you want to be able to deploy a game. I don't expect anyone to really be deploying any of these. These are really all just exercises. So how much time we want to worry about, you know, packaging and installing and seamless, um, we'll, we'll get it as we go, but we won't, uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, I'll stop streaming. And I'll stop.